Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Michaels Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for August 16th, 2019. We are officially past the halfway mark. I am WX0MIK and my name is Mike Wills. This season we are covering amateur or if you prefer ham radio. These recordings are getting later and later on me. I'm not liking this. But family gets crazy, and uh, I think the kids are ready for, for school. So today we are talking about nets. So what is a net? Well, they were kind of developed in the very early days of radio. Um, these networks help stations meet on air to share news and messages. So, you know, if you kind of think about... Um, a regular net, you have all these different points of, of uh, contact between each other. And really what a net is then is that it is um, in a very controlled way, uh, people talking to each other. And it's more, it's multiple people. So um, they use, uh, they use a process called traffic handling to kind of exchange messages. Um, I really wish I would have recorded um, when we had uh, a little, few to um, tornadic systems, I'll call it, roll through the area. Ultimately, we were, in the Mankato area, we did not have any tornadoes, thankfully. We just had, um, um, uh, what's the, <laughs> what do you call it? We had um, funnel clouds. Wow. It's 11 o'clock at night. My brain's not working. At least that's what I'm, I'm blaming. Um, so what you have is you have one person that's kind of in control, so to speak. They are the source of information and they are, well, in, in a weather situation, they are the ones directly communicating with National Weather Service. In a quote, net, as it is uh, the, the weekly meetings that usually happen, and there's quite a few of them. Um, I missed one tonight even. They are much more not so purposeful, per se. It's more of a, hey, we need to keep this up. Let You still have a net control, or a person who's net control, or the person running the show, ultimately. And then... Um, they check for for check. They they ask for check ins, and then when you check when you check in, you give your call sign. So, I do believe I got the whole thing. Uh, typically, what the um, the Mankato area radio club does is they ask for emergency or tra emergency traffic handling. Usually, there's nothing, but it's a formal thing. And then they uh, may ask for announcements or club announcements kind of thing. So then people will call in for that if there's things they want to share. And then they call for general check-in. At that point, anyone else can check in. Sometimes people just say in and out. They're just like, I just want to add your account, but I have nothing to say. Other times, and you'll hear that on my, the recording when I call my call sign, I'm just saying in and out. I just I had nothing to say. I just wanted to check in. Um, and other times, other times, you know, they may say, "Well, after field day, it's like, what did you like about field day, or what did you find, learn about field day?" And then people share about that. Or sometimes it's just whatever you want to talk about. Okay, so you know how when you get start going, and all of a sudden. You totally forget that you, or when you're editing anyway, you totally forget that you're actually going to insert an audio clip in there. Yeah, that was this. So a little bit of quick setup. Um, this is an analog FM radio um, 
net. I'm going to sh show, play the whole thing. Um, I don't know as a crow's fly exactly how far Albert Lee and Austin are. I can tell you Albert Lee, by driving, is approximately an hour, let's just say an hour and 15 minutes. And Austin is about an hour and a half drive. Now, those drives are almost straight south and then almost straight west. So if you want to look this up on a Google map just to get an idea, I live in Mankato, Minnesota. They're in Austin, Minnesota, not Austin, Texas, Austin, Minnesota, and Elbert Lee, Minnesota. Uh, Elbert Lee is where I-90 and I-35, where they join. So um, you can look that up. That is quite the distance. And you know, obviously, we are over the horizon by any stretch of the imagination on that. But our tower that we're communicating on is 250 feet in the air. And I don't know how far their antennas are, but that kind of gives you an idea of just how far sometimes these analog systems can go. I think we had a contact from Iowa somewhere, which is actually further yet. But we, we, it was so static at the time, it was really hard to hear. So I, I think they couldn't hit quite hit our tower enough to where we could understand enough to do a full net on that. But I just wanted to give you, the insert this, and now I added two more minutes, so you can hear what a full net sounds like, at least our local net is. So I will return you back, to, so I will play the clip, and then I will return you back to your regular scheduled recording. As we encourage all licensed amateurs to do so. Uh, let's see, this net meets every Sunday evening somewhere around 9.30 p.m. Uh, local time on the 147-240 megahertz repeater, which uses a positive offset in a 136.5 hertz subaudible tone. And let's see, with that, Take a standby for anybody with uh, traffic for the net. Well, with nothing heard, uh, let's move on to anybody that's short time mobile or portable. KB0, you still a short time. There you still a short time. Okay, I got you, Linton. KB0UCL, go ahead. Okay, uh, good evening again. And good to talk to you on digital. Uh, this one for the go. KB0UCL. Thank you, Linton. You're making it just fine. A little noisy, but considering from Austin, you are doing great. And with that, uh, let's move on to uh, general check ins. I'll take anyone anywhere. WX0 MIK in and out. Okay, picked up a few that time, so let's go to uh, WA0 RLY. Carl, down in Austin, go ahead. W0 GCW, thanks for picking up the net tonight, Terry. It's always good to have a forum to talk in just a little bit, or at least make contact. WA0 RLY here, we had a great time with the Amateur Radio Demonstration Station at the Mark County Fair. 421 visitors we logged, and uh, they stopped by, asked questions, and were kind of interested in ham radio. And I told them, with ham radio, there's no monthly fee, and that uh, brightened up a few eyes right there. <laughs> and we had fun doing it, too. We made contacts uh, all over the states here on LT8, and even a couple on voice on 10 meters, so. Back to you, Terry. You have a very good week there. W zero T J W W A zero R O Y. Thank you, Carl. And uh, well, the other thing with ham radio is you get to meet a lot of friends, and uh, you included. Even though we have not met in person, uh, a good friend that you are. And next, another good friend, uh, K E zero P Q W. Matt down Ellendale. Go ahead. Yeah, very good. Good evening, Terry. Good to hear you. Down and stuff. Well, that bringing up Ames behind us. So, good evening to Ames. But, uh, not much going on here. Just having a bowl of apple 
ago when the ISS station was doing that event, I talked about that. I was like, hey, this is cool. This is the first time I did this and blah, blah, blah. So sometimes it's shooting the shit. Other times it's, you know, real stuff. And the weather nets are the most interesting part to listen to. Um, in this particular case, it's a little less organized because the guy who's running that was also chasing. But um, so I'm not sure how he did that, but um, no, normally he's sitting at home and he's kind of directing people and say, okay, uh, is anyone over here? Is anyone over here? Hey, we need someone over here or over there. So then, you know, at least to kind of help out and he's, he's reading the radar and saying, oh, there's a, three hail cores in the system and, bl- and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, he, he's almost, be- well, he is better at reading that stuff than I am something to strive for. So ultimately what a net is really for is to exchange messages. So if you're in a disaster situation, you may have a net control. And then what you're doing is you have all these fingers, nets, whatever you want to call them, people out there. And then when they have information to share, they contact net control 
and the net control will um, respond when it's their turn to pass on the message. And if it's an, in case of an emergency, and I do believe they point that out in here. Yeah, if it's a precedence where it is, um, so you got, you got to determine the nature of the message. Uh, they call it a radiogram, and you'll learn more about that in here. It's uh, routine, priority, emergency, and welfare. So, you know, if you check in and give your call sign and say emergency, they're probably going to drop whatever's happening and they're going to hit you next um, or first. So um, it's, and then they pass on the message, probably the law enforcement or whoever needs to know that information. It's, once you hear more about it, and there really isn't that much within the exchange messages side or within this chapter about it. But once you start learning more, it's like, oh man, that is a great structure when you're talking about a system like that. So I'm also going to talk about chapter 6.5, which is communications for public service. Um, so within amateur radio, there are several um, emergency or several groups, I guess we'll call it. Uh, one, I th if I remember right, is officially sponsored by the ARRL, and that is ARES, A-R-E-S. Yep, yeah, sponsored by the ARRL. And then the radio, so ARES is um, ra Amateur Radio Emergency Service. Take a step back there. Um, and then you also have RACES, which is Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service. I, If I remember right, RACES was established through the... Uh, come on, come on. Um, that was in the other book. Um, that was created through, I think I want to say like the, um, one, like the defense department or something along those lines, their focus originally during the cold war was for, well, when there's a missile attack. <laughs> so that was kind of the original purpose. They obviously, we have no immediate threats of war most of the time. So they also do normal disaster recovery type stuff. And then there's Aries, which that is more their focus is the local disasters and things. Um, there was a truck or there was a video I watched from Ham Nation actually um, a couple months back where they showed their emergency response vehicle that they had just built. So there was multiple radios in there. Um, so I'm going off track here on this, but you can read the book on most of the stuff. There isn't too much according in the test related to that. But this truck was really cool because they had, let's just say, four or five radios that were designated for each of the different public safety sectors. So you had the firefighters that were out battling the um, fires, forest fires. This is kind of the area that they're in. Um, and you had another one monitoring police, another radio monitoring fi other fire staff, another one monitoring something else. And so what they did was, one, they listened to all these communications, and then they passed it on to the local authorities that were they were helping out. And then on top of that, they have HF. They, they have, you know, so they're not broadcasting on those. They are just listening. And then you have the regular amateur radio bands where they're broadcasting or they're sharing information or coordinating that way. And so this is literally just, just a, um, I think it was a van or something. Um, so they literally drive up to wherever they need, they're needed. They pop up stuff within a very short period of time and they're communicating, they're listening, they're doing every, anything that's needed. And then I guess the structure is such that there's like a, I don't want to call it level one, but I think it was like a level one is where they were at the, I'm here, I'm helping out. And then you have the level two come in again, not, you know, structure. I'm not, I don't remember hundred percent. They're the long-term support. So these guys pop up, get this stuff going while and then within the day or so this other group of people come in 
they put up their big tents, they put up their big antennas, they put up their antenna arrays or whatever, and then they're designed to be more long term. You know, they could be there for days or they could be there for weeks. And where these pe you know, the original van is really just for the quick we need something now. So, you know, if you really start li listening and researching, even just briefly, some of these things that these people have are doing, you're like, wow. You know, he, knowing that this is here, this is like the silent people that just go out there, they do their thing, they leave, they rarely get any recognition, at least that I have heard for the first uh, 39 years of my life. And um, they move on. You know, this is just what they do. I personally, I think it's really cool that, and then they don't get paid for this. This is all volunteer. So th this is the type of stuff that they kind of, you know, go through and they talk about. And within the book, they talk about various different types. Um, sorry to hear paper rustling. So they have like tactical communication. So um, go south to the parking lot. Uh the, and then kind of ref, uh, a report status of the final float is leaving the staging area, T you know, tactical type stuff. Uh, then you can also have emergencies and disaster relief. You know, um, I hate to say it, but people who were trapped on their roof on their roofs after a hurricane, that would be something like that. Uh, distress calls, so it could be mayday, mayday, mayday. You know, given your location, the nature of the situation, so on. Just emergency communications training. Um, and so at, I don't know if everywhere has one, but I know at least in Minnesota. And I bet if you check every state has one, there's some sort of an Aries team with a, a head of the state. And then each county probably has a head uh, person. And uh, something I, I want to research down the road a little bit more. And then um, within the book, they also talk about emergency communications and your employer. And, uh, you know, the first thing they say is you're not allowed to receive payment for your services except for reimbursement of actual out-of-pocket expenses, including mileage. Um, but then they kind of go into that a little bit. And me, especially being in government... I, I think that's a weird line that I'm hoping I don't have to ever navigate. But I'm just thinking, it's like, okay, I'm off the clock now. I'm going to do radio stuff. Okay, I'm back on the clock now. I'm not doing radio stuff. I don't know. Those are blurred lines for me. Like I said, I hope I, hope I never have to go into that mode. Um, there are other people who do um, CERT. I don't know if you know about the CERT teams, uh, community community emergency response teams. Um, they're another group that you can get up, up get into. And as I understand it, you know, radio is awesome if you're an amateur radio person on, with that. But then you're also more directly doing emergency response and everything as well. So that's another thing that you that you can do, and you can even do that without having a radio license. Is cert team? They're they're just looking for people who are willing to jump in when disaster happens, and then just for practicing and things like that. It's other local events. I know my local one; they usually work some concerts, like the air show, things like that. So, um another thing to pursue and then maybe if you decide to go with a tech license then it kind of complements each other so the one i am really interested in and that's not listed in this book uh directly that i can in the quick glance see is skywarn so skywarn is a really weird one um because you can be part of the national weather service quote skywarn and that is you know, you're out, you know, spotting. You don't have to be chasing, but you can at least, you know, look and report weather, even if it's just in your house. 
And, um, you know, you're just saying, okay, we got hail. Oh, it looks like maybe a funnel cloud, you know, things like that. Or you can do Skywarn, the amateur radio. And now you are communicating through radio and, you know, maybe a little bit more formally organized because now you have a net control who's directly talking to the National Weather Service, typically. And then you are listening to or you're communicating to them what you're seeing. Again, this is something where I only recently found out about, even though I've been watching uh, Storm Spotters and I kind of seen the amateur radio pieces, but I never seen reported by amateur radio. And now recently I've been seeing that. So it's very interesting how quote loosely structured this is but how effective it is and then you have other areas like um the the minneapolis uh, st paul area they actually have what they call the um oh great now i'm gonna forget it metro skywarn so they take it a step further where they are officially training you giving you your own unique Skywarn ID, and then as part of your reporting, you need to use your Skywarn ID on top of your call sign in order to report any weather. I talked to a guy down here, he's like, eh, yeah, they're really structured up there. We're kind of like, we just assume you know what you're doing when you're reporting stuff. And by that, he means you've gone through the Skywarn training that the National Weather Service provides, it's like a two to four hour training usually about two hours if you have something like that in your area that's free i highly recommend doing that i think i said that last year during my weather stuff so i've talked quite a bit on these two subjects um i think that's enough for for that um again if that is of any interest to you I would highly recommend at least getting your technician license because then you can help with communications on top of everything else. Uh, one thing I also I should mention, I have not been part of any of these yet, so I am a little curious about how that works. But we, amateur radio also works various events. So I mentioned the air show in our local area. That's a, an event that amateur radio had worked to help with communications or security, or I'm not sure what all they did because I wasn't around. Um, then we also have a marathon that, that happens in the town. They help with that. And some local other areas, they bring in amateur radio for communications, for guiding people, whatever needs to happen. So there's a lot of um, collaboration, especially with public safety and amateur radio. And that's where, again, you have a net control directly with public safety, and then you have all these people out and about. So, if you're, you know, and then you're helping and you're not an expert in public safety, it's kind of best of all the worlds, if you want to call it that. So, um, yeah, I think I've talked more than talked to Eraf enough about this subject. So I will wrap her up and um let's see you can con my website is mikewills.me. You can email me at mike at mikewills.me. And uh, once again, thank you for listening, just like I say every single day. And 73 from WX0 M I K. The frequency is now clear. The frequency is clear. WX0 M I K 73.